Now, Trexone is an opioid receptor antagonist approved to treat alcoholism and opioid addiction, but some people use very low doses, known as low-dose naltrexone, or LDN, to treat other conditions, including multiple sclerosis, and many people report that it helps symptoms of MS, like pain, fatigue, and spasticity, including Los Angeles actor and YouTuber Damian Washington. I've been taking it about a week, and I can definitely say that it has improved my overall sense of well be. My legs work better and there's less spasticity in my knees and I have more stamina when walking. Indeed, I put up a Twitter poll and about 43% of people who had tried LDN with multiple sclerosis noticed some improvement. But where is the evidence? In this video, I'll explain how LDN is thought to work and some of the research behind it, including two controlled randomized trials. Let's have some fun. So as I said, naltrexone is an opioid antagonist. In other words, it blocks the opioid receptor. The opioid receptor, there are many opioid receptors, the most prominent one being the mu receptor, is stimulated by drugs such as morphine and heroin. And as you can see, naltrexone has a very similar structure to oxymorphone, which itself is a potent opioid, but it has this cyclopropyl methyl ring, this triangular ring of carbons that basically prevents it from stimulating the opioid receptor. So it sort of competes with and blocks that receptor. And so it's used primarily for things like opioid overuse and alcoholism because it's supposed to prevent the high that is obtained from those substances. However, it has many off-label uses, mostly pain conditions like fibromyalgia and complex regional pain syndrome, but also autoimmune diseases, especially Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but also diseases such as multiple sclerosis. Now, the normal approved dose for alcoholism, for instance, is 50 or 100 milligrams, and it's actually relatively safe to take this type of dose on a long-term basis. But in MS, low doses are used, usually between 1.5 and 4.5 milligrams, and you can't actually obtain this readily, but it can be obtained at a compounding pharmacy. And the idea is that this is an older medication. There's not a lot of financial incentive to research and market it, so perhaps it's somewhat underutilized. Now, even though LDN has been popular since about the 1980s, no one really knows for sure how it works. One idea is that the effect on the opioid receptor causes a rebound phenomenon where your own body's regulation causes more natural opioids and endorphins to be released. The idea here is that naltrexone has a relatively brief action and then wears off and then kind of stimulates your body to make more endorphins, including opioid growth factor, which may have some positive effects on the nervous system. It also has a potential anti-inflammatory mechanism because it blocks toll-like receptor 4 on macrophages, which is one of the white blood cells that invades the center nervous system in multiple sclerosis. Also, it may have an effect on apoptosis or programmed cell death of oligodendrocytes, which are the cells that make myelin in the central nervous system. And this is based on a nitric oxide synthase pathway, which normally induces glutamate toxicity. And that's shown in the diagram above, but really no one knows for sure how it might be working. Now, every drug has risk. And I have to say, low-dose naltrexone is thought to be extremely safe. And the side effects on this slide are greatly overstated, mostly present just for completion. However, it should be noted that this is an opioid antagonist, so you can't really take it with other opioids, like you can't take it with Vicodin, one, because it blocks the effect of Vicodin, and also if you're taking naltrexone and opioids at the same time, it can cause other side effects like severe nausea. With very high doses, such as 300 milligrams, liver injury and hepatitis and elevation of laboratory tests for liver enzymes has been reported, although that doesn't typically happen with lower doses. And because of the effect on the thyroid, altered thyroid hormones have been reported. Now, a lot of people report better mood with naltrexone, but depression and low appetite and fatigue have been reported. A lot of people take naltrexone at night because it helps them sleep, but vivid dreams can be a side effect, and supposedly if this happens, you can try taking it in the morning instead. And some people get some degree of gastrointestinal upset, but it's usually not severe. Now, the interest with LDN and multiple sclerosis started with animal studies, and what you're seeing here is a study in mice with a condition that's thought to be a mouse model of multiple sclerosis called experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EAE, and they use a certain type 
type of EAE called MOG EAE. And here in the horizontal axis you see time and the disease process starts around here and on the vertical axis you see the, the disease score or the severity of disability in these mice. And so in red you see the vehicle or control group and the mice acquired a relatively high degree of disability. But when they were given low dose naltrexone which was 0.1 milligrams per kilogram they had a lesser degree of disability on average. And interestingly if they were given opioid growth factor which is believed to be part of the mechanism of low dose naltrexone it was even more successful and these mice had even less disability. Next we'll look at a study done in actual humans with MS in Italy and this is an open label study meaning it was not randomized everyone got naltrexone and it was in people with primary progressive multiple sclerosis and one thing they found is that people getting LDN do in fact have higher levels of beta endorphin you can see the sort of distribution of beta endorphin levels definitely went up on average by the end of the study now the clinical results weren't great there was a statistically significant improvement in spasticity you can see the average value based on something called the Ashworth scale which is a measure of spasticity in multiple sclerosis it started at 0.87 and went down to 0.5 and 47 percent improved 42 percent were stable and only 10.5 percent worsened so it was effective there it made no difference in terms of fatigue or depression interestingly pain got slightly worse on average for unclear reasons even though many people report reduced pain with LDN although the starting value on average was 2 versus 3 it's a little bit unclear why this occurred it seems like pain wasn't a big issue for most of these patients now something very interesting happened in Norway in 2013 because now Trexone wasn't very popular in MS prior to that time but there was a very popular documentary about LDN in MS extolling all of the benefits and all of a sudden it became very popular and a lot of people were using it and so research this aside let's do what we'll call a quasi experimental study and look at people before they started using LDN and afterwards and see if whether or not they took LDN and the number of doses they took had some effect on their multiple sclerosis and they didn't really find much so they did find that people were changing from older disease modifying therapies such as beta interferons and glutiram or acetate to newer oral and infusion medications but in terms of medications used to treat MS like baclofen for spasticity or systemic steroids to treat multiple sclerosis there really was no change so it didn't really look like LDN was doing that much however at the University of California San Francisco Francisco, Dr. Bruce Cree, who you see pictured to the upper right, did an actual double-blind placebo-controlled randomized trial with LDN, and he used the dose 4.5 milligrams in 60 people with MS and they did an eight week crossover trial meaning you got the drug for eight weeks and then you got the placebo for eight weeks and you didn't know what you were getting at any given time but everyone got the drug at some point and you can see they used surveys to compare the drug versus placebo and they looked at mental health and pain and in terms of physical symptoms measured by the physical component summary survey there was really no difference between LDN and placebo however However, in terms of mental health measured by the mental component summary and mental health inventory there was a pretty significant difference and also the pain effect scale suggests that there was a pretty significant improvement in pain with naltrexone so this is really good randomized data suggesting a benefit of low dose naltrexone in pain and mood in multiple sclerosis however a very similar study done in Iran failed to recapitulate this result this was a 17 week again randomized blinded placebo control crossover study with 96 people and group A is the group that was originally randomized to naltrexone and group B was the group that originally got placebo and there was no difference in any category between naltrexone and placebo although they didn't look at pain specifically you can actually see that based on the health perception survey group A the group that originally got placebo did worse although they were actually worse at the beginning of the study but there was no difference between placebo and treatment so as you can see the data are a little bit mixed but certainly there is some experimental evidence that low doses of naltrexone may be beneficial for some of the symptoms in MS such as fatigue, spasticity, and pain although it's not definitive and I really don't think there's any evidence that low doses of naltrexone treat the underlying disease. So you shouldn't really think of it as a disease modifying therapy at least not based on current research. Now over the years I've had quite a few patients try this treatment. I have no strong feelings about it one way or the other. I have
have had patients say they have a benefit from it, especially in terms of fatigue, although interestingly, one patient reported that it worsened her fatigue, so she went ahead and stopped it. I haven't seen any serious side effects with this medication whatsoever, and the only thing that would give me reservation about prescribing it would be if the person was taking an opioid medication, for instance. Otherwise, I'm not aware of any major contraindication. I'd be interested to know, have you tried low-dose naltrexone, and what are your results, and have you had any side effects, and do you have any requests for future videos?